What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 8, Episode 15, Question and Answers. Okay, listen, so let's get into it. Bitch, first of all, hey, y'all got y'all tickets to go see The Lion King? Bitch, I got my tickets today. <laughs> I'm going um Thursday night, okay? A bitch had to be up in there early. I had to be one of the first to see it. You know, motherfuckers could have just sent me an advance ticket in um general. But you know a bitch, baggers can't be uh, choosers and all that shit. And I'm going to support the whole cast. But whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. But anyway. Anyway, moving on from that. Um... <laughs> Let's get into this episode. So, it starts off with Pooh doing a little photo shoot. I said, bitch, what? Y'all, that's all y'all do is do makeup shit. Like, y'all, this makeup shit be um, making a killer. You know what I'm saying? Um, bitch, let me put out some eyeshadow and shit. Don't know what the fuck. Just let me put my name on the brand or something so I can get some money out this bitch because a bitch needs some. Okay? Everybody can name mom. It's like 50,000, 511 million freaking um, makeup brands out here. Everybody want to do makeup. And I'm just sitting here like, pull you of all people, you know, her ladybug lashes and her FaceTime makeup. Okay, Mimi comes down there talking to her <laughs> and Mimi and her feelings. <laughs> because Ty back, right? Ty been over there playing ball in Israel. Israel, <laughs> it's my land. <laughs> Woo, Whitney, may you rest in peace. Uh, anyway, damn, I wish she was here. She would have gave us some shits and giggles, for real, for real. But anyway, um, you know, they over there, and she just in her feelings because she feel like Stevie J is being an Instagram dad. And with you was on social media probably a couple of months ago or even a month ago, um, <clears throat> Stevie J had, um, you know, commented something on a, pa a post that she had put up with her and Eva, and then she calls him an Instagram dad or whatever, you know, she was like, um, you trying to be funny, even though he tried to make it seem like I'm just trying to congratulate and be cool and all this stuff, but she was like, bitch, I see right through it, okay, he was being petty and shady, but anyway, that was when I first heard him call, her call him Instagram dad, so she was like... <laughs> You know, I went to go meet up with Faith and I went to go see what was going on, you know, with Stevie and Faith and all that stuff. And we became cool or whatever. And so we took this picture and we put it up on Instagram. He put it up on Instagram and now she upset. And then they go flashback to, uh, you know, when Faith, uh, not Faith, when, Br what's her name? TJ? Ty, bitch, something. When Ty saw the post, she was like, but, but, but what is this? What is this? You know, all of a sudden, he just wanted to be an Instagram dad. That's what he's doing. He's doing this shit to manipulate you and all this stuff. Let me just tell you this. I don't know what the fascination is with straight women and studs, you know, gay women, masculine women, gay masculine women, um, and want to be stud daddies to these women's kids, okay? That's never been a thing that I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I would prefer my woman to have no kids at all because I ain't got time for baby mama or baby daddy drama. I don't have time for that shit. And I don't want no other kid calling me, being confused about what to call me. Bitch, call me Ashley. Ashley. That's what you call me, okay? Not Ash. Not Lee. Ashley, okay? Don't call me stud Ashley. Don't call me stud daddy. No, because that's not what I am, okay? I'm nothing to you at this moment. You know what I'm saying? Oh, bitch, I'll take that. All right? Uh-uh. Don't try to get close to me like that. Uh-uh. I don't do kids. I don't do kids. No. But anyway, I said, it's an epidemic. Like, they for real. Always want to be a straight woman or whoever's stud daddy. Like, for real, for real. It's just crazy. But, you know, they trying to figure that whole thing out and, um... At this point, Pooh trying to figure out why people don't like her, why people, you know, don't take up for her. And, you know, I didn't do nothing to you. Why you all up on my jump? Because they see the bullshit that you did. And it's like, if you can pull that shit and I don't even fucking know you, you doing this with people that you know. I don't even know you can do this shit even worse to me and you don't even know me like that. You know what I'm saying? I said, Pooh, come on. You can't act stupid in this situation. Let's stop. Okay? Let's stop acting fake. It's them lips on your mouth. Okay? Stop it. Stop it. Moving on from there, we have Jock. Now, see, Jock, this one motherfuckers don't want to take you seriously because you do the absolute most for shits and giggles. Like, for real, for real, for shits and giggles. Okay? Because... 
You're supposed to be interviewing some um, people to work at the shop. You don't want to go about it the right way. And this is why Sharonda be getting all pissed off too, okay? Sharonda got issues of her own, but bitch, half of the shit that she was saying about you... No, all of the shit that she was saying about you is probably 100% correct, okay? Somebody spilled some tea up in my um, comments last video and said that, yeah, she a bitch, okay? She real rude, and they used to work at the shop, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, okay, you know, spill everything that you know. But um, anyway, <coughs> <coughs> mm, got a little excited. <coughs> Ooh. But anyway, girl, Jock, listen, you don't want to do, you're doing all this stuff behind Sharonda's back. And this is why Sharonda say, you just the investor. You need to just stay behind the scene or whatever. And I understand that you invested your money, but you are not going about this shit the right way. Bitch, anybody could have put a sexual harassment claim against your ass. You ain't got nobody that to show, back you up and say that this didn't happen, that didn't happen. It was consensual, all that stuff, because you're doing it behind people back. You don't want them to hold the interviews at the shop. You're holding it at a little club, bar, whatever, that they shut down. And um, you entertain, in the interviewing, first one girl said, he said, what can you do? Well, my grandmother got a cosmetology license, but I you don't have one. No, I don't got one, but I can braid hair. You don't need no license to braid hair. I said, bitch, what the fuck? The other girl said she can do whatever. And then the other one, she was like, I can do whatever you want me to do, bitch. I said, open up your eyes for me for one. Okay, that's what I need you to do. Okay, now, bitch, I know my eyes is bad, but goddamn hers. I was just like, first of all, she was just facially challenged. All that flirting that they was doing, I said, Jock, really? Then the other one that was in all the fishnets and stuff, teeth was all fucked up. Now, I know mine's is, but goddamn, mine's didn't look like that. You know what I'm saying? From a distance, them things look perfect, okay? They look perfect and white as shit. Up close... They still kind of white, you know what I'm saying? But hers, you didn't even have to look for a, a distance or up close to see that bitch is yellow chucks all up in that bitch, okay? Cr everything, you know? I'm just, that's what you like, Jock. I mean, he was just fascinated and Kirk and Scrap come through on him and, you know, talk about, so this how you get your ass in trouble. You talking about something you want to marry this girl, but you up here doing, conducting interviews and stuff like this. That's why people can't take your ass serious at this point, Jock. You know what I'm saying? You know, um... Kurt talking about how, uh, you know, Rashida didn't really say nothing about the meet up with Jasmine. Just said that they went to go meet up. So I'm like, oh, she, she said that. Ain't nothing really happened. Um, you know, some shit probably went down. You know, you got to look out. But listen, I got a seminar that I'm putting on. I said, bitch, you putting on a seminar, Kurt? Anybody stupid enough to go to a... You stupid for whatever, whatever happened in your relationship. You take your advice from Rashida and Kurt. You're dumb enough to take it. You're dumb enough to let anything happen to your relationship. That's all I got to say on that. He wanted to take... Scrap wanted to take Sierra. He going to say, why don't you bring Sierra down there and all that stuff. I'm like, so y'all are really trying to be a thing thing, huh? You really trying to fill this out? I said, Sierra, don't give up the puss to him. She probably already did, but you never know. And then they asked Jock, did he tell his baby mamas about him getting married? And he talked about something. No, he haven't told them yet, but he going to tell them soon. I said, okay, Jock, that should have been in the plan right off the bat. Because, you know, this is going to get in their feelings or whatever. Because they just can't let go of the fact that you have moved on. But, hey, it is what it is. He going to tell them. So, Jock meets up with Alex, his ex-wife, and Cena, his baby mama, okay? And I think she wanted the baby mamas to one, a couple of his twins or whatever, uh, two of his kids, his twins. Um, anyway, so basically, he took him out to lunch, having a little small talk, trying to get to the bottom of telling them that, you know, he's thinking about um, giving Kendra his last name, marrying him. And so they was looking like, what? And at first, I was trying to see where they coming from. I was like, uh-uh. Because <clears throat> they made it seem as if they had an issue and they was going to be like, uh, so you want to marry her and all this stuff and woo-woo-woo. I'm about to say, bitch, it ain't, your time is over and done with. He can get married to whoever he want to get married to. Your opinion really don't matter. As long as she gets along with your kids and respect y'all as mothers and stuff like that, that's fine. That's it. It don't matter what you say. But then they went on to say they do like Kendra. They do like the fact that she gets along with the kids and know, you know, things of that such or how to work with the kids and all that and respect them enough. And, you know, Jock told him that, you know, well, you ain't got to worry about her wanting kids because we ain't got, she don't want no kids. And, um, you know, that was like, are you sure that you're um, ready for all of this? And, you know, he tells him about how she, he got her name tattooed on his penis and stuff like that. And do you want to see? No, bitch, we don't. Okay. And then they like, you know, 
<clears throat> we need to talk to her, okay? See if where her head at and all this stuff. No, bitch, you don't need to talk to her, okay? Let that shit go. It is what it is. But then again, if it's coming from because we all about to be family and dealing with each other, yeah, okay, you can go and talk to her. I can see that. But if it's on some messy shit, you can X your way out of that, okay? Don't be on that jealous shit. Don't be on that envy shit. Don't be on none of that shit, okay? Alex, you had that. Alex said, so we're going to be bridesmaid. Girl, hell no. <laughs> she was like, no, nah, listen, I'm just telling the joke. It's just a joke. Okay? Moving on from that. Moving on from that. We get this whole scene with Mimi and Ty. Ty. What you mean, Ty? No, uh <gasps> It's too one food book. <laughs> Noxima Jackson. Anyway, um, but um, may Patrick Swayze rest in peace. Miss Vita Boyam, uh, of the House of Williams, you know. But anyway, so um, she comes into the house. You got Mimi up there folding up clothes or whatever. She's dealing with the whole issue between Ty and uh, Stevie J. They doing this little battle. And what I was talking about earlier in the um, review, that's what they put up the post of. And he was like, y'all should have died. And, um, you know, some people probably, that probably went over their heads or whatever, you know, as to him being shady. But he was definitely being shady. And like Mimi said, he was trying to say that, you know, you should get your own fucking kid. Okay. And I caught it when I first saw it. I said, bitch, it's Stevie J. Nothing that he says and does is out the kindness of his heart okay uh he's not being supportive and you know <laughs> ty is just over it she like basically you're gonna have to talk to that nigga she was like listen i'm gonna keep going back and forth and back and forth so what you're gonna go back and forth and back and forth with him and do all this stuff like we know that stevie j is an idiot okay i've known this forever it took a while to get to where we at he's an idiot and he's asshole with everybody he does this with every relationship that i have okay but he's doing this mostly because he don't want to see you with nobody else and he damn sure feels some type of way that you're with another woman as well okay and you're giving her all that love and affection you was like i love ty too much for this stuff to fuck up i said <laughs> you love that plastic that's what you love okay you love that scrap you know she said look let me say this time I'm going to have to get this relationship together, okay? Because I'm going to go talk to him. Because Tab was like, listen, every time he want to, um, you know, somebody got to call him out, okay? He want to come at me, I'm going to come at his ass. Got to put his ass in his motherfucking place, okay? You an Instagram dad. You only come around when you got work to do, okay? You don't pay child support. You don't call your daughter. You don't do this. I said, damn, Ty. He was like, you know, we trying to start a family of our own and all this stuff. And then you got this whole shit. I said, Ty, that's what happens when you... You know, fuck around with baby daddies and stuff. A bitch with a baby daddy or white. You know, that's what happens, okay? I mean, this is the life that you chose. That's why I said, if these studs love playing stud daddy to all um, these straight women kids. But, you know, it is what it is. And dealing with them straight people problems. I ain't got time for that shit. I don't have time for that shit. Ooh preach anyway you know Mimi was like because Ty said you know if this keep on going I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this no more she was like uh-huh what you talking about our relationship bitch he keep on trying to make this shit stressful I ain't gonna be in here dealing with this bullshit you know what her, her tone changed up from oh so you gonna fight him you gonna keep going back and forth oh you giving him what he wants you shouldn't be seeing nothing of this. no listen bitch I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna talk to him because this ain't gonna happen you not gonna take away my plastic okay you not gonna do that I was like you not gonna take them fingers away you not gonna take that mouth away you not gonna take that strap away you not gonna take it away from me I said alright Mimi the thing was yours okay maybe she maybe the relationship really is real you know i don't know it is what it is moving on from that carly red goes over there to rashida's um press you know press 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 carly don't need no more press anyway um the bt awards was on last night girl just had a fast rack anyway sorry okay but um <laughs> She go over there to her and basically talking about how she really don't know how to talk to her people anymore. And I'm one of those people that regardless of how I can't stand a person, you know, it's a universal topic that a lot of women go through where they lose themselves in a relationship. They get into a relationship that seemed perfect at the beginning and all to the good. And then all of a sudden that person starts showing them their ways. And that's exactly what was going on with Carly in her relationship. She didn't say it was physically abusive, but he was ver verbally abusive, um, aggressive, basically controlling her, putting her on curfews. The bitch said she was scared to eat. Like, girl, are you serious? 
Are you serious and you don't know what you're supposed to do? Leave that motherfucker, bitch. That's what you're supposed to do. And I know it's easier said than done. But, girl, you tell your people about it so they can have this documented that this motherfucker is crazy. Or, you know, that he be out here doing the most or whatever. This ain't the first time that she even said something. Yes, I have noticed a change in her behavior and all this stuff. And that's what Rashida was telling her. And she was like, you got to be prepared to be able to let this go. Okay? Because you don't need to be with somebody that's going to be controlling your every move. What type of shit is that? You ain't my goddamn daddy. Girl, please. So, Agba is in the studio. <laughs> and she like... You know, I just want, I just want you everybody to know my story, okay? It's like everything has been going wrong, negative shit is all in my phone. I'm just trying to do my thing and do this and do that. I was like, oh, okay, you know, girl, you know who I can't wait. I can't wait till rocks. Rocks, let me tell you something, bitch. You got to learn this song, okay? Put the subtitles on because we, you, you've been, you've been skipping out on songs for Akbar B, bitch. We've been waiting for the musical interludes to come through, all right? Okay, okay, you know, you've been warned, but, um... Y'all go over there and tell Rocks that. Anyway, um, so she doing all this stuff. Hiram is in the studio. This is a studio session that Hiram has, um, you know, made for her, put up for her. You got poo up in there. <laughs> yeah. I said, okay, bitch, you know, be there with your man like your man gonna do now. Hiram, how old is he? I know he been out since the 80s, you know, in the industry since the 80s. Damn, he look like... You don't know what age he is. Like, he got that Benjamin Button syndrome. Like, bitch, he can be young. You know what he look like? Remember Jack? That was my motherfucking movie. With Robin Williams, he was the old young man. Benjamin Button syndrome, okay? But the, it was in reverse. You know, he was aging aggressively. You know what I'm saying? That's how he look. You don't know whether or not he a young dude or an old dude. He could be either or. The bitch could be 60 years old. The bitch could be 40 years old, but he looks 60 and 40 at the same time. Goddamn, bitch. How old are you? But anyway, you know, posting up there. Girl, yeah, this this cute. She's like, yeah, this my new song, uh, Child Support. You the infamous Pooh that's been, uh, everybody been talking about. Yeah, bitch, you know, everybody got a problem with Pooh because they can't beat me. But that's another story for another day. It is what it is. Hiram was like, you know, I see where this is going. So let me just take this cue as this so-called phone call that didn't really ring. And let me go take it outside and let y'all talk okay mona i got you that's right cool okay so um <clears throat> they get to talking and she was like tell me what's going on yeah so you know sierra that whole thing with sierra you know we was out there at the um on vacation for her birthday and what happened was her dude come up to me talking about something oh you look good as shit you know he ain't say he wanted to fuck but he said he wants to get with me and I was like watch I'm telling Sierra as soon as I get back you know what I'm saying but what wind up happening is you didn't tell Sierra you should have told Sierra right then and now I don't give a fuck if it's birthday weekend or not bitch you tell that hoe if that's your friend you tell that hoe right then and there okay y'all gotta stop holding on to information I don't, I don't wanna ruin the trip bitch the trip gonna get ruined the friendship gonna get wrong because you held this um information tell me right then and there because i will fuck him up and tell him bitch boo bye and then that's be it that be it and i go back doing myself that's all okay and then i won't be mad at him and you at the same time you know what i'm saying i'll just be mad at him you know what i'm saying that's what makes you look guilty because y'all be holding on to shit until later time to say stuff but anyway you know she was like she's just going off the shit what carly said or whatever and that's the thing everybody has an issue with me and it's like i don't have no problem with nobody we go to trinidad and it's like they all ganging up on me it's like i feel like i'm being bullied and stuff like that it's just like you know especially with shikana and tokyo like i don't even know them like why they so pissed off at me wait a minute so you got it into it with Shekinah. You know what? See, we was okay. You know, the bitch claimed that she liked me, but I feel like she really don't. Cause you know, I got a baby that uh baby about one of the bit uh niggas that she used to fuck around with. But um, it's like every time we come into interaction with each other, it's always something or whatever. And it was like, how am I supposed to know that you was fucking around with this dude that I didn't even know about or whatever that you knew? Like, girl, I don't know you like that. So what are you talking about? You know, you got to stand up, team. You know what I'm saying? You can't let these bitches be um putting you down or whatever. You got to stand them up fucking ground you don't be going to no places where they be at or whatever now let me tell you something so yeah but she crossed the line when she talked about my kids now we was friends and everything but like we used to hang tough but you know she was talking about my kids i said bitch what did she say about the kids did she say something about her not having the kids that's why you don't have your kids and you need to worry about getting your kids or something like that 
Either way, she felt that was a low blow. I got to go back and look at last week's episode to see what happened. But either way, that's what she thought was a low blow. She was like, uh-uh, she's going to have to do some major apologizing for us to be cool again. And, um, you know, she was like, let's just pop up on some shit. <laughs> Pooh was like, I'm down. I said, I'm down too because y'all messy as shit. And I just want to see some mess. That's it. I'm just admit it. So, Carly gets over there getting her wig done by Shekinah and, um, you know, telling her everything that's going on with her and Mo, you know, she's trying to get her relationship back on track. I said, okay, girl, if that's what you want to do, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, who am I to say something? Who is me to judge? But, um, they get to talking about the whole thing with, um, you know, Kendra and Ja going through some stuff because, you know, this is a salon. We gossip, okay? And then Kendra and Ja go, uh, pull up. Um, you know, it's talking about somehow, you know, over at his salon, echelon, that he be over there trying to fuck on the girls or whatever, and he be flirting with them, and, um, that's what's be going on, and Sharonda was telling her all of this stuff, and she was getting the feeling that Sharonda was kind of in her feelings that Jock won't flirt with her and all that stuff, and I said that's exactly what it is, too, okay, that's what it is, bitch, you know what I'm saying, and, um, it was like, and I did appreciate, <laughs> for some reason, she kind of said, don't say nothing to Kendra about this whole shit, because, you know, this hearsay, this is from Sharonda, and she acted like she want him to flirt with her too so you know she could be saying anything that's what she was getting at but carly was like i'm not surprised and you know when i used to go on dates with jock he used to um by the time we get to the restaurant by the time we leave he didn't get the waitress number so i'm not surprised that he'd be out there doing some mess but then they started talking about you know she um getting her sexology graduation and, um, it's the same day as Shekinah's, um, uh, sex, um, love, relationship, and wealth, whatever seminar that she's throwing again with, um, Kurt and Rashida, like we saw earlier in the season. Mm-hmm. But it's on the same day as Carly's graduation, and she was like, it's okay, I'll just get you some toys or whatever. She was like, yeah, bitch, because I ain't never called an orgasm before. I said, what? Girl, you don't know what you... <laughs> <laughs> you just ain't had a nigga or a bitch hit right because you just you know but some women can't orgasm some women have never do you realize that there are women and men out well there are women out here i don't know about men but i'm pretty sure probably having too but there are women out here that has never had an orgasm girl i feel sorry for you i really do because like that you know you ain't never had nobody put your eyes behind your back like and make you just you know, and your toes, and your hands, and all of that shit. You ain't never had, goddamn, you ain't never had none of that. Electricity just flowing through your body like, you know, you ain't never had that. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. You know, she's like, get this rocket and put it in there. She was like, girl, I said, no, girl, we do candy coated, okay? We do candy coated toys, all right? But anyway, do what you got to do. Moving on from that. <laughs> Stevie J in the studio doing whatever he was doing, singing, rapping, probably sounding like he was putting down a demo. Mimi comes in there and basically was like, you going to have to fucking stop fucking with my girl. You're taking jabs at her. You're sending me texts talking about saying you need to keep your little bra. She's on, floating on three band ice and all this stuff, you know, and he was like... <laughs> I'm just trying to be cool and all this stuff. You know, he's just being very passive aggressive. And then the thing about it is, here go Mimi. He's doing all this stuff because that means that he's still in love with me. And he's not going to get me. I said, okay, girl, that could be the truth. But he's doing all this stuff because he is an asshole. And y'all keep feeding the energy to him to do that, okay? Once you ignore that bitch and let him say what he want to say and just ignore it so he can look like even more the stupid old, you know, that motherfucker get tired, okay? But when y'all keep feeding it and keep responding it, that's what you're going to keep on getting, okay? He gets off on it. You don't know this after all these years? Then you get upset with him. And she was like, we trying to, uh, <laughs> we got to control this situation or whatever. And we have to be an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie is an asshole but when he said a what <laughs> cause I said the same damn thing let me tell you something people adult okay adult that's how we said out here in the midwest you know what I'm saying now I done heard how that, that pronounced in different ways and when I look at the scorpion show Kevin and Mikhail the way that they say adult I be like that's how y'all say it. it it blows my mind every time I hear them say it it's different and then she said it another way I was like bitch what is this okay the vernacular is just crazy you know so he made a adult <laughs> 
They did make me laugh. I was like, your girl had you down here to talk for her. No, bitch, that's my girl. I'm going to tell her everything, what you said and all that shit. Oh, you sure that's yours? I ain't trying to say she mine or whatever, but you sure that's yours? So of course, me, we can't keep her hands to herself. She knocked his little hand out. You know, security had to come through. And I was just like, oh, next thing. So it's Carly Red's sex party graduation. Well, sexology graduation. And um, she got Erica, Mimi, and um, Spice is there. Erica is about to pop. You know, she already had the babies, but, you know, she big. You know, I said, damn. And when they was like, girl, you all belly. I said, I'm looking at her like, girl, you really ain't gaining that much weight if you did. Because she still got her cheekbones and everything popping out and all that stuff. I said, you know what? You carry them shits well, baby. Okay. You know, when Beyonce was pregnant with twins or whatever, you can tell with all the weight gain. With Erica, she pregnant with twins too. And them babies don't look like... Girl, she still the goddamn same. <laughs> it just looked like they put a belly on her and that was it. But anyway, um, you know, people carry babies uh, differently. But, um, so they was like, girl, it's supposed to be a good party. Why are you looking out down? Well, you know, um, Mo, we haven't really been talking ever since I moved out and ever since we went to couples counseling. And then when it got to the real truth of things, he just couldn't take it. So he just walked out like the cow that he is or whatever. Moving on from that, they started talking about me, me and Josh. Uh, ooh, me, me and Jocelyn, wrong people. Oh, classic fights. But Mimi and um, Stevie J and Ty, she was like, girl, my happiness was all for a quick second. You know, Ty been gone for six, seven months in Israel. And then she came back. And then, you know, Stevie always putting these passive aggressive posts up on every under, comments under her post and stuff like that when she posts with uh, Lil Eva. And then I talked to him. And see, this is what Mimi had me fucked up. Mimi said it got ugly. Okay, what's your definition of ugly? Because it didn't really get that ugly. You the one that got all up in your feelings, okay? And then gonna say, you know, it got heated. I went off and he couldn't take it. You know what happened? He had to get up and walk away. No, bitch, you hit him and the security and production came in and pushed him out. That's what happened, bitch. Now, am I the only one who saw that? I said, Mimi, stop fucking lying, okay? And then, um, you know, they talking about all this stuff. Um, Spice said, okay, fuck all this shit. Let's get to this party or whatever. Then you got Cena coming in telling, um, you know, because Cena and Carly, they still cool or whatever. But she's telling Carly all about Jock and um, situation. Talking about son. Oh, he talking about son. He was with Kendra for four years. But how you with her for four years when you was with me? You was with Carly. You was with, you know, Miss Piggy. Um, <laughs> AKA baby, baby knee. Shout out to Rox. You know, you was with this person, that person, all that stuff. And I was here from um, Carly, surprisingly, when she was like, you know what? This person trying to tell me his business. This person trying to tell me his business, girl. We friends and all or whatever. But I don't want to hear nothing else about that. That ain't my, per that, that's not my life. See the like, mm -hmm. I said, bitch, you know what? Shut up, because you still bitter. Now, seen I gave you the benefit of the doubt, but see, you brought the situation back up. Why are you still talking about it? Let it the fuck go. It's still like a slap in the face. How? Because he ain't want to marry your ass. Girl, go. And how dare you call somebody Miss Piggy when you look like you didn't gained a few pounds from Miss Piggy? I'm just saying. It's your kind of um, little seminar with Kirk and Rashida. Who gives a fuck what Kirk and Rashida talk about? They talk about a bunch of lies. Okay. So then we see Act by V come in. Okay. And her whole thing is she trying to put, um, you know, her on front street. And, you know, once again, she make herself look stupid as fuck. Scrap, you made yourself look stupid as fuck too because you was waiting on Sierra. Sierra ain't even called, text you or whatever. She said, bitch. He said, listen, 30 minutes and the bitch ain't even here. Like, damn, girl, the shit almost over with where you coming. I said, you've been stood up, baby. That's what that is, okay? I said the dick probably wasn't that good. But she probably going to hit you off something later. But, you know, it is what it is. Something happened, you know. But moving on, you know, um, she kind of had opened up the floor to the people if they want some questions to ask Kirk and Rashida. And then she going to say, ask Bar Vegas the mic and was like, what happened if you talk to a dude and um, you didn't know that this girl used to mess with him and whatever. And that girl always got problems with you because that's what she kind of did to me. And she kind of looking like, girl, what the fuck? And was like, that's what you always do, bitch. You punk fake ass, bitch. You fat ass, bitch. You fat for nothing ass, bitch. Whatever. She kind of said, bitch, do you know God? I said, first of all, we shouldn't have said both of them words together like that. But yeah, do you know God? And I was here for she kind of response. I'm not about to go down there and touch her and lose everything that I got. I said, come through. She kind of the only bitch on this show that got more sense. Okay, she do some crazy stuff sometimes, but she the only one that got sense up on this bitch. She said, I am not about to come down there to that bitch level and try to fight that hoe. 
and lose what I got. This bitch ain't got nothing to lose. That's why she doing this shit like this, okay? And once again, you make yourself look stupid as fuck, Akbar, because you didn't get that same energy back that you was putting out, okay? So it was just dumb, you know? And I can't wait to see the reunion because something goes down between Akbar and Shekinah. So it is what it is. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this review, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.